CodeMonkey here. First of all, let me apologize for the length of time between videos. I got terribly sick for about two weeks with a high fever due to a mosquito bite. And after that, I finally recovered and I got a new job making mini games in Phaser, which has taken up a lot of my bandwidth. But I hope to be able to start putting out these videos regularly again. Now, I asked you, the viewers, to send in questions. And I thought I'd be getting a lot of technical questions and instead of getting a lot of game questions like how do I make the character use ladders or how do I make the character invincible for a limited amount of time? All great questions. So those are the questions I'll be addressing. And to that end, let's start making a platformer game. And we'll start with making the animation of a ninja. And we're going to be using a JSON file to be able to load this in with a free program called Texture Packer, which I'm sure a lot of you are using already. So, let's get started. Code Monkey, get up, get coffee. Code Monkey, go to job. So I'll be using several things today to speed up production. I'll be using the utility template from phasergames.com. I'll be using my animation snippets, just because uh, some of these are a little tricky and it's hard for me to always remember exactly what the code is, so it's nice to have these little things to help my memory. I'll also be using the Texture Packer from CodeAndWeb.com. I believe they have a free version as well as a paid version. And I've opened up the program. And I've got these images here from OpenGameArt.org. I'm going to take all the ninja images here. I'll just leave out that knife. And all I need to do is to drag it in to the texture packer. Then you can select images and preview the animation. Now you might notice that some of these have these little stacks next to their heads. What the program is doing is detecting identical sprites. So it will save a lot of room if it knows that animations like the attack and the run are using the same image. I'm going to go ahead and take that out right now. One, because I don't believe it's part of the free version. And also, it's a lot easier to do the animations with the code, as you'll see in a moment. And I'm going to change the algorithm to basic. And the reason I'm doing that is just so everything will line up. If we do it max rex, then it tries to optimize the sprite sheet, which is great for production but for development right now and just making it simple to show you how to do it i'm going to put it on basic and we're going to sort it by name that way everything is in order so attack zero one two three is all lined up just so we can keep everything straight when we're learning how to do it and now i'm going to publish the sprite sheet and i've put it here with my code that i've set up with the utility template and i'll make a new folder called images and we'll call the file ninja. What that does, it writes out both an image and a JSON file. And the JSON file is what we need to load in to make everything work. Now, normally when we load a sprite sheet, we load it with the key and the path, the frame width, and the frame height. But since we're using a JSON file, we use a different statement of code. This load atlas. And we still need the key, and we'll call it Ninja. And we need the path to the image. And then we need the path to the JSON file, which has all the data in it to how to split up that image. Images ninja.json. We'll go ahead and put our sprite on the stage. This Ninja equals this, add sprite. And we'll just put it at 200, 200 right now, just so we can see it, Ninja being the key. Okay, let's check that out. And there's our ninja. Now to add the animations, we need to know what keys are in the sprite, in the sprite that we've defined here with the JSON file. So to extract all the frame names, we can use frame names equals this texture, get, and then the key of the sprite that we're loading and get frame name. So I'm going to copy that, change the key to Ninja, and then let's just log those out to see what we're dealing with. So there are all the frames that are in the sprite. 
And this is the reason I went ahead and did it in order of the names over here in the program, sort by name, so everything would line up. Otherwise, all these names would be all over the place. So let's go ahead and make an animation. And we're just going to copy this snippet here, create an animation. This animation create wonk, and we'll change the key to attack. The key is ninja. And then we have to give it the frame name. Now, usually we can use numbers, but since we're loading this in with JSON, we need to use the frame name. And I'm just going to copy it over here from the console. So attack underscore zero 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 PNG is the first key. Now I might in a minute go into the JSON file and clean up those names because that gets rather lengthy and unorganized and personally I don't like it. But it will work. And the attack goes zero through nine. So there, now I've created an animation with Ninja called attack. And then to play it, we say this ninja play attack. And I've set repeat on negative one. So that means it'll do it over and over. The frame rate is the speed, which is eight. And you can change that. The higher the number, the faster it will go. Let's check it out. And there, we've made an animation. And if you want to make more animations, all you need to do is copy that code again and replace it with these keys, idle, jump, jump attack, what have you. And it'll put those in and you can just call the play with the key to get the animation. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of those in the file. And then you can download that from phasergames.com or you can do it yourself. Thanks for watching and I hope this has been helpful to you.